Welcome back to the channel. Type 40 Extra is an after show, but also a before show. And it's an in-between show too, where we scroll the view screen here for the sights and sounds of the Hooniverse. Those fixed and not so fixed points. Who's calling this time? Who's calling this time? Yes, Peter, I'm talking to you. It's a friend of the show, member of the Type 40 community too. He's here with Sarah, Simon and myself. We're going to have a big old chat with Tom from T-Dwarf Models. Tom. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hey, we got you. Thank you so much for inviting me for Type 40. Makes me feel really welcome to be part of your crew. Well, you are very welcome here. It's lovely to have you here. And you're often chatting along. You, it, when you, you, I know you watch our live shows and you often comment along on the live shows as well. So uh, as Dan says, you're, you're part of our community. So welcome. Welcome. Thank you all. Thank you all for your really kind and warm welcome. I think it's Tom. We kind of feel like we already know you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I've been, <laughs> I, uh, you did mention me two years ago when Simon showed off the models. I did. did. Was it really that long ago? Wow. Yeah. And it's funny because I can I, I remember Tom the first time I saw your models, which we'll obviously talk about in much greater depth now. Um, but I remember the first time I saw them was on social media. Uh, there were some pictures posted up of these wonderful little models um that at the time you were taking down to the doctor who shop in london uh, and i was just blown away immediately i was like oh my god i can't believe these models i need some of these models and i got some they are behind me here <laughs> i've got four of them on display behind me well let me know what monster you like next because i like i would i want every monster tom <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> all the models are so good you want to see bug monsters as well yeah, I, I just anything you do is just brilliant. It's, it's so great. Is, is that is that how it works then, Tom? Do you do requests? I mean, you see the eager eyes of Simon Horton there. He wants to fill up that shelf. Is that how you decide which monsters you're going to do next? It's it's like supply and demand. Well, sometimes it varies. If I get requests, I tend to make the model immediately. But sometimes I can really? make models by myself, you know, just for my personal interests. Do you remember what the very first one was that you made, Tom? No, but I can tell you when I um, first started creating. Yeah. Uh, I think it was when I was about, oh, I can't remember. I think it was when I was 10 years old back in 2007. Yeah. I've always wanted to make my own line of small little action figures, just like Wallace and Gromit did. Well, mm -hmm. much like Ardman Animations oh. did. And yeah. sure enough, mum bought me a tub of, of plasticine and I started making things from scratch. And that's when I became really really into it, you know, always in creative. I mean, my family grew up being creative. My grandfather was a craftsman and my uncle Rob was, um, he d he's a graphic designer. So he designs things yeah. on the internet. Yeah. Really? So you come you from a, a creative family? Yeah. yeah, I have. Whereas my mother used to be a nurse, but she's retired now. And my dad is a service engineer. Oh, very good. So you grew up a Doctor Who fan then in the in the nineties or the noughties? In the two thousands. And um yeah. can I just say this, Dan? I'm really looking forward for this year for Doctor Who. Are you really? It, yeah, because this year is gonna be the fiftieth anniversary of my very first Doctor Who show I ever saw, and it still remains as my all time number one favorite story. Which one was Which that? Is? Well, it's, I'll give you an easy guess. It's John Pertry's last story. Wow. Planet so of the Spiders. spiders. So is it anything to do with this? Is that choice anything to do with the creepy crawlies and the monsters that you like turning into yeah. models? Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, Dan. To tell you the truth, I, I grew up loving scary animals and spiders are my number one favourite animals. Are they really? Yeah. Uh, a bit strange, oh, Sarah. Yeah. Strange. yeah, but well, I, 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 I do get might... the appeal. My, my boys are all into creepy crawlies, so yeah, I do, I do get it, but yeah, it's not not my thing so have you made any spiders from that episode tom no but i am planning to do a scenery we're in a spider's control room with all the little spiders sitting on a table and i've counted how many there <laughs> i were. would love to see that <laughs> yeah i managed to count how many spiders there were and it turns out there were about 23 including the queen in total so i'm gonna have to make all of those sitting on the table yeah. and it's going to be enough five inch line you know, of the character options figures. 
An wow. arachnophobiac's nightmare, Simon. Where, where do you stand on spiders? Oh, I am a huge arachnophobe to the extent that I have literally had hypnotherapy to try and get over. I'm not kidding you. I am not kidding. I'm not. And it's interesting, Tom, because I remember when Planet of the Spiders was first screened. I was there for the first screening. And I've always wondered, maybe it was Planet of the Spiders that actually gave me my fear of spiders. I don't know, because I would have been uh, six years old. They may be terrifying, but in reality, they're heavily misunderstood. And I and I accept them. I don't think I'm not misunderstanding them. <laughs> they just <laughs> terrify me. <laughs> I've, work, I've um, You know, Simon, you always introduce Lenny to the library. Yeah. And Lenny's always hugely popular. He is hugely popular. Very popular. Well, if you don't mind, I bought him my personal pet. Go on then. And she is a creepy crawly, but luckily she's not a spider. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. She, she is, in fact, an animal. That's um, that's mm -hmm. my that's basically my star sign, and it's an animal we find in both the ocean and in the beach. And to Yehuvians, she's a small relative of the macra. <laughs> You are joking. Betty the Crab. Oh, my oh, life. Limey. Where on oh, earth do you keep Betty? Where do you keep oh, Betty? Mate. I keep Betty in my bedroom. She always what, in a tank? Me. Yeah, in a tank. And she yeah. watches me every time I make models. Yeah. Does she actually, Does she need water or, or, or what? Do you, do you kind of have to have water in the tank or what? No, she's actually a land crab. So she does need water, but only a big bowl of it. To keep her gills <laughs> wow, oxygenated. Okay. What's her name again, Tom? She is a land crab and she spends most of her time on land. But what do you think of her? Is she beautiful? She's spectacular. She's cool. From this she's distance, she's fabulous. And I love, I love that you call her Betty. Why yeah, Betty? We got the name from a character from a show called Some Others Do Album. Oh, oh Betty! Yes, Frank Spencer's wife! Yes. Yeah, my, my oh, family and I love watching that show. And I love, love that show. Um, yeah, as I showed you, you might might have guessed that my second most favorite Doctor Who story is the Macra Terror. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't even, you can't even see the Macra Terror. You can only watch it as an animation, and yet you still love it. Is that because it's got crabs in it? Absolutely, and I and I wanted to show Betty the story. It's, Just, that's what I love about the story is that um, I guess crabs sort of got their revenge on humans. Yeah, certainly did. I oh. bet you like gridlock as well. Yeah. Does yeah, Betty yeah. does Betty ever get out of the of the bowl and maybe try and fight one of your model monsters? <laughs> well, I would do. I did sort of plan to do a picture of a of her standing next to a TARDIS to make her look like she's a macro and she's about to terrorize the doctor. Yeah, well, I, I mean I have to say, from here, she's got a pretty good spitting resemblance to a macro. She does actually, I mean, you know, I know not all crabs look like macro, no, but no. she does happen to look like a macro. It is quite, it is quite uncanny. Hello, Betty. Yeah, Welcome to Type 40, I think. So have you made, Tom, have you made a model of a macro? I can't remember whether you've done a macro. Well, yes, I have. Just bear with me one moment, if Betty mm -hmm. can let go of my arm. Yeah, definitely. I've actually made a model keep, of a macro. Put, put, put Betty down safely, whatever you do. The macro... It's the largest model I've ever done. Oh my life! Wow. That's is that all? Is that all? What's that made out of, Tom? Then? Oh, it's a like you said, it's a type of clay called silk clay. It's right. A type of, it's a type of air drying clay that when you make something, it goes rock hard, but mm -hmm. it's also mostly indestructible. So if if you drop this thing, it probably won't break. But you have to be careful of the. The yeah. stuff like the pincers and the eye stalks. The antennae. Are those are those by any chance cocktail sticks at the back there that I can see that are making the uh the eyes? No, they're actually wire, so you can actually pose them. Oh, oh my oh, god. Oh, very good. Look yeah. like it's so presume I was gonna say there must be something inside and is there a tub or something inside? No, it's completely hollow. <gasps> wow. And what, I, and what I can do, I can actually um put my hand inside it and Brilliant. just follow just for a laugh, I can actually make the macro stick its tongue out. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Betty. <laughs> Close your eyes. And we have no way of knowing whether the macro did that on camera because the macro terror no longer exists as a story. No, but judging by the tur snaps, really? it did foam bubbles, which is what crabs yeah. do when they're stressed or, or 
or frightened. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, you could play uh, a part. I mean, I tried, to make, it, I tried to make it look as authentic to the actual um, Shawcraft model as best as I could. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I had a sad fate that it got junked. Yeah, afraid so. It, I mean, it is remarkably good, and and you quite rightly, you've only in effect given it two claws because that's all they had in the uh, in in the show. Um, yeah, but if you look closely, you can actually see smaller claws. Yeah. underneath the. Mouth. Oh yeah, got them. Oh yes, I see. <laughs> did, they nice. put, did they put those on the on the original prop? Do you know, Tom? Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got. But one, one thing I didn't do though is that the actual prop had sort of spiky, bristly hairs. Also got hinging claws. <gasps> Can't How on earth did you get them to hinge on a piece of wire? You, it's just Very so clever. clever. I mean, speaking as, as somebody who's been looking at pictures of your models for the best part of two years, by the sounds of it, Tom, the thing that I that adds to the charm of the style of them is the attention to detail too. You're clearly somebody who really loves Doctor Who. Absolutely. But you're also also somebody who has obviously got a, a great uh, a mind to be able to look at those original designs and to think how you can translate them into that kind of plasticine world there In that's that inspired style. you. Yeah, it's a lovely thing. Because you said, Sarah, you always wanted to see a stop motion series. I did, yeah, and I, I still maintain that. I think you could do that to this yeah, day. Yeah, that's, that's my biggest dream. My biggest dream is to write my own sort of animated cartoon called terror dwarf hence the name of my youtube channel I, i'm getting the impression that tom has no fear of either scaling creative heights or of any any creepy craw uh, crawlies whatsoever i mean one of the things that you made recently is this little cybermat isn't it that they yeah, would scare have. the life they scare the life out of a lot of people particularly uh, 60s kids 60s yes, sur yes. survivors lay awake at night thinking of these things and here you are bringing their nightmares back to life in three dimensions <laughs> there absolutely fabulous stuff tom yeah to tell you the truth i actually made that cybermat for my for my father's new car which is silver so so he asked me to make a cyber map for that car and now it's his personal little bodyguard whoever steals the car how, <laughs> how, big, how, how big is that tom how big is the cyber map there it's oh wow it was quite big it was quite big oh, then quite big. Not, not as big as the actual prop i mean it's smaller mm -hmm. than the actual prop but well, still big enough big. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the, the I mean, detail with the antenna and i uh, just yeah. I just yeah. think I'm, I think this is adorable. I know you shouldn't think cybermats are adorable, but it, no, they're, it they're is, quite really cute. Tom, do you give your models names? Um, some some of them, yeah. I mean, of course, I named this cybermat Bitey, like Bite. Matt, <laughs> like Matt Smith well, named his cybermat Bitey. He did, yes, well remembered. You're very fond of Daleks, though, aren't you, Tom? Like a lot of Doctor Who fans. And you've yes, sent us so many pictures, so many pictures of Daleks, both classic and new. Daleks, obviously, is something, again, that's, that's terrified generations of Doctor Who fans, but fascinated us in equal measure. Largely, I think, because of the design to recreate it in, in whatever way. We've seen giant Daleks made of, made of hay, for example. Like yeah, 50, yeah 60 I remember that. High. Mm -hmm. But you, you go, you go right the way down. You right the way down to the macro level. So where do you start in recreating a Dalek in plasticine? What's your what's your base level for putting together something like this? We've got a golden Dalek in front of us, obviously from the two thousand and five series onwards. Yeah, I mean, to tell you the truth, to tell you the truth, guys, Daleks are extremely difficult to build, which is why. They look it. I, yeah. I mean, at the moment, that's the reason why they're quite rare in my collection. The yeah. most. The, the, the worst part of making a Dalek is obviously the skirt, you know, yes. doing all the flat panels right and making sure mm -hmm. each of the little hemispheres are the same size and they're at level with each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just looking at it at the moment, you know, the attention to detail on that. You've even got the little rivets in each of the in each of the yeah. slats on the shoulder section. Oh, it, it, it's an enormous amount yeah. of detail. It's breathtaking, yeah, Tom. How, how long would this would this take then compared to some of your other models mm, well the dalek probably took about four or five days to make because i have to really? i have to scale it first and then plan what part i needed to do to it next mm -hmm. and then um and then i sort of build the the skirt first since that's the mm -hmm. hardest part and then work my way up to the dalek's dome you know mm -hmm. to make sure that all the proportions are right mm -hmm. make sure it's the same size because literally i just modeled that dalek on one of the carrot options three inch daleks uh, okay. 
which uh, the reason why they're in the foot three inch range because um it's it's easier to do but it's also l less time consuming and it and it costs me less silk clay as well because that's the thing silk clay i know is not a cheap commodity it's not like plasticine that, that no, it's it isn't. especially in places like hobbycraft it's really expensive mm -hmm. it's like six pounds for each tub and am I right in assuming that once you've worked with some some of this silk clay and you made it, it after how long does it take before it's set? And then presumably you can't use it. Then if you do something wrong, that's it. It's it's wasted silk clay. It's not like plasticine you can reuse. No, no well, it, it sort of varies. I mean, it says in the pot it takes from two hours to twenty four, depending on on how big the model is. Okay. I mean, for especially for the three inch Daleks, it probably take about maybe a day for each section to dry before I can successfully glue them all together. And do you get to a point where, where you where you started to build something and actually you suddenly realize, no, you've gone wrong with it and you just have to scrap a model and start again? Many times, especially, especially considering that, um, you know, the, the, the soldier section with all the slats, sometimes mm -hmm. the slats can be a little bit haphazardly placed in, but... Sometimes it's sort of authentic because the Dalek props, especially yeah. in the late 70s, were in a complete state. Oh, yes. Any of the Daleks, they were just falling to pieces. Oh, yeah. And 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 a lot of them are even missing slats. So, so I don't yeah. think you go wrong there. I mean, on this one that we're looking at now, which I love because this has always been my favourite colour scheme, blue and yeah. silver. Yeah. Um, it, it, are those slats, those are still made of silk clay, are they? Because they all, almost look like cardboard or something. Yeah, they're completely made out of silk clay. And... Um, what I did is I used a rolling pin to flatten it out, and then I spray painted the flattened piece of silk clay silver to sort of, oh. to sort of make it look like it's the tight, it's the metal slats of the actual props. And I tried to use real mesh as well around the midsection, but I sort of gone the easier way and just stuck a bit of even more thinner silk clay in, and just use a cocktail stick to edge in the holes to make it look like it's actual mesh. And I think that's the right thing to do personally, yeah. because the whole point is it's all made of silk clay. So to suddenly introduce a new new medium such as mesh would somehow, I don't know, somehow detract from it. But I was assuming that you were using silver silk clay, but no, you've actually had everything that's silver on there, you've had to spray paint. Yes, I did. It's, it's all spray painted. I, I had to spray paint the entire skirt without any problems and the dome. But for yeah. everything else, I had to carefully hand brush them it's a little bit um, eye spraining, but it's definitely worth it. It makes the Dalek all, all like it is from the 1960s. So all the blue models, are those, are those hand painted as well then on that? No, no, they're the actual colour. Those are blue, those are blue <laughs> silk clay. And at the end of every time I do it, I have to rush to the bathroom and rinse my hands in hot water. <laughs> it's very difficult. Oh, oh, I can imagine. I remember I, I made a Tardis cake once, Tom. <laughs> And yeah. to get the, the right kind of blue, I used a hell of a lot of blue. blue, blue, blue. <laughs> and now yeah. by the end, because I was it's, doing like the rollout icing, oh, yeah. And I I know, it, really, to get out. it must have been much worse if you got stuck under your, under your fingernails. Uh. Like, Oh, I, oh, you were terrible. Yeah, look, I just I look like a scrub. <laughs> it's, the end result is absolutely striking, Tom. But then again, they're all striking, yeah. particularly yeah. this one, I think. Oh, That's that. my favourite type of Dalek. I love the white and gold Imperial Daleks. Yeah. Oh, it's gorgeous. I've, I've always loved the white and gold as well. I just think because it's such an unusual colour. I just love the way it's, it's sort of steeper and it's more sleeker looking than the other Daleks. Yeah. I mean, yeah. of course, in, in Membrance of the Daleks, the Imperial Daleks were, they were brand new props, but they were yeah. much more thinner and steeper in a way than the 60s props, which were more yeah. sort of narrower, especially down the skirt. I, I have to ask, Tom, because, you know, you've just said how difficult, how kind of painstaking they all are, but particularly Daleks. But yet you've done several of them. So do you set yourself fresh challenges? Do you think, I wonder if I can do... I've done this. I wonder if I could do that. Do you set yourself these new challenges every time? Yeah, I mean, it, it sort of varies. I mean, if someone asks me to request to make something, I, I'm more than happy to do it. But if it's a model that's really complicated, what I tend to do is that uh, rather than doing it in silk clay first, instead I... I just use um, basic plasticine, you know, as, as sort of a template, you know, as, yeah. as sort of um, test models to make sure mm. how, how accurate can I get it to be, 
you know, what parts need changing and what parts need improving. And especially with, with plasticine, it never dries out. So I'm yeah. always happy to uh, use those scissors or any, any modeling tool to, to re-sculpt it. And then once I'm happy with the final results of the test model, or more accurately, a prototype, then I turn it into a silk clay model. If all of your work, everything that you do, I love the I love the audacity of how you approach these models. But the fact that you you do this and you try all these different things, you challenge yourself, and yet the end result is always so charming. Whatever it is that you're doing, it really is like its own little world within a world. It 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 really is lovely. Yeah, I mean, as you can see, I'm always a huge fan of exposing the Dalek mutant inside. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you've actually you've made that mutant look cute. Yeah. <laughs> and that's so all this is what I love about your models, Tom, because they're not they're not faithful, they're not slavish faithful reproductions in the way that a, 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 an action figure would be. They're caricatures to a large extent. They are caricatures. They're very you. They're very unique to you, to your style. Um, and they're, and they are almost cute. And that's what, you know, I, I mean, you know, I still, I still, you know, here's my, here's my little, um, here's my little robot of death. And he is, he's yeah. cute. He looks like he's just stepped out of Trumpton. Um, yeah, and it's, no. and it, you know, and that's just so cute. It's just so, oh. so adorably cute. I still love, I still love his little legs with his little, the little, the little, the little, um, right. Around the socket, yeah, yeah, the little crinkly, yeah. the little crinkly wrinkles around his legs. Um, yeah. It's just, it's just a beautiful model, but it's cute. It's clearly a robot of death, but it's a caricature of a robot of death. Yeah, yeah. you wouldn't mind being bumped off by one of those. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think it's speaking, fine. Speaking of the color green, hmm. obviously it's my favorite color, hence why I'm wearing it. And in Doctor Who, they always say that the color of monsters is green. Yeah. And I can remember a time in the eighties. All monsters always died with green blood. They was they always had green goo. Yeah, Frontarans in the two doctors. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, all all monsters in the eighties were green on the inside. Well, speaking of the color green, I got a very familiar monster. I got with me at the moment. It's this big guy. Oh, I got one of these. Well. You made me one of these because I immediately zoned in on this. Yes. Look at that. Look at that. And I was just, That's I mean, look at the suckers wow. on the bottom. Look at all those little suckers. Yeah, Fantastic. but one thing, that, one thing that your model has, which mine hasn't, if you look underneath, in, right in the middle, you can actually see a little octopus beak. Oh, I'd never even realised that was there before. Yeah. I had right. never clocked that that was a beak. Yeah, well, it's my one didn't. I mean, this one I'm Brilliant. holding... Even though it's one of my favorite models, it's mainly a prototype, you know, of what, what I wanted the nesting to look like. Because I'm always curious of what the nesting's whole body looks like. Because mm -hmm. obviously in the story, we don't see what the nesting's whole body looks like. We mm -hmm. we just see the tentacles. Yeah. And I absolutely love the novel describes the nesting yeah. as a part crab, part spider, yeah. part mm -hmm. octopus yeah. with many tentacles. And the, the covers always show a pair of crab claws and a huge oh, yeah. glaring eyeball. And believe it or not, the crab claws on the nesting, both of them, they're actually modeled for my pet crab. Mm -hmm. Oh, brilliant, these here. There we go. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. It's what my crab does. When she, when she gets older, she mops, she sheds her skin. And what she does, she leaves her old skin behind. So I was able to salvage her old claws and use them as a template for the nesting wow. to try and make it look as realistic as possible. Oh, yeah, you can't, you can't get any more. No, no, no. Yeah. These little legs, they all move on the back again. These are all yeah. hinged with uh, with wire, so they all I move. I do feel a bit. I do feel a bit conscious of the fact we're looking at her backside there. So, and I remember Simon, when you brought it to our attention, told us yeah. about Tom's work. Yeah. This, I think, was the one. You think the audacity of this, yeah. the how you would achieve it, it. It's incredible to think that you've done this with the with the uh, the plasticine and the silk clay with your own two hands in the, in the way that you describe it, it truly is. Because I suppose this this has got all the charm that we described earlier on, and yet mm -hmm. it does look like a... It, it almost looks like it could move, Sarah. It does. They're just... I, I love how, you know, each tentacle's, you know, it's I always find making, different. Yeah. I always find making um, octopus tentacles quite satisfying, especially mm. with all the little suckers. They start off big to begin with, 
but then as you go up to the tentacles, they get smaller and smaller. Well, they do because I mean, oh. you know, if you can get to, you know, I mean, look at the look at the little suck, suckers at the end of that tentacle. You can just about make it out. They're That's still cool. there. They're still. If you can just about see them, they yeah, are. Yeah. Those are still suckers. They've still got a little hole in the middle of them, um, yeah. and they're just absolutely tiny. You know, they're like about half a millimeter across. It. How do you get something that small? And how do you manage to stick it onto the model? It's just incredible. Well, remember I said that silk clay is indestructible. Well, it depends on the model. It does have one weakness, and that's water. Because okay. at one point, I accidentally <laughs> um, dropped a model in a, in a sink full of water. And when I got it out, it started, it started moisturizing. It, didn't, it wasn't itself, and it, it was just oh, dear. Yeah, it ruined the color. And so oh, wow. I that straight away, water can also be a very useful tool. Mm -hmm. So what I got upstairs in my workshop is that I've got a little tub of water and I dip it in, dip the silk clay mm. in the water and I just squidge it on and it sticks much better without, oh, even yeah. without the water. So basically with something like these little suckers, that's how you'd stick all those on is you'd use water to stick all those on, would you? Yeah, but whereas the other parts, like behind the nesting, the, the spider legs, they're yeah. sort of attached on and I made them, I deliberately made them articulated to make it look like it's sort of, crawling and sort of, sort of slivering and yeah, i like this other way i've done the sense, effect. Sort of posing yeah. various poses yeah. you know one sort of curling one sort of stretching that yeah. sort of thing and, and the reason i particularly love this and this is why i zoned on this in on this one immediately when i first started seeing your your figures on on um on social media and i immediately zoned in on this one because it, it's so it, it it's inspired by the original target's novel cover mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. does that they they put it they put a nesting consciousness on the front of that and it's much more akin to this than obviously what we see on on television yeah. it's this kind of thing so I can see the inspiration there. so I loved it because I remember you know the the book cover just looking so much better than what you actually see on television um, and and that's what you've done it is almost the, the the target the original target book cover it's a little disappointing we don't get to see the whole nesting yeah. body I mean is it simply the case as one would think that the larger and the more elaborate such as the the nesting there that that would take you longer or doesn't it necessarily work like that is it sometimes down to the actual creature and and and, and realizing what you have what you picture in your head and making it happen or something that's the little things that are, are slightly more intricate in detail such as the um the body of this vervoid with the little leaves and things like that so would this take oh, quite a long time too? Be even more oh painstaking. Oh my god, the vervoid. I mean, it's one of my favorite models, and I've gave it away to um to Colin Baker in in um in in Comic Con. But mm. that that took me two weeks to make. Wow, it was absolutely wow. painstaking to do each of I'm the leaves. Yeah, well, well, you can see, yeah, but it, I mean, God, the detail on it, Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean. Great. I mean, to tell you the truth, after I've done the vervoid, my hands were still a little bit green afterwards. <laughs> I bet they were. Remember, remember I said in one of the live chats that I had made a, a Varga plant in a... Yeah, yeah. you did. Well, here it you is. Hey! Oh, let's, wow. let's see what's going on. Oh, hey, whoa, whoa. Look at that. That's brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I tried to keep it as authentic to the, to the actual prop as close as I can by looking on the internet. And this yeah. is what the Varga plant really looks like. It looks yeah, like a, yeah. a bubbly cactus. And they even <laughs> said it uses its, you, you can see the little roots where it helps yeah. it drag itself along. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, 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 there aren't many photos that exist of the Varga plants. There's not yeah. much footage. So that is pretty much as close as you're going to get. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Are those all little wires that the spines that are sticking yeah, out? Yeah, the fawns, the, they're all wire. I was going to use cocktail sticks, but it was a little bit, tricky because i have to spray paint all of them but they end up flying all over the place so mm -hmm. i thought the easier thing to do is use black wire i mean judging by the photographs the um the, the fawns were very were very thin they almost yes. looked mm -hmm. like wire anyway so yeah, yeah. i went with the wire option and i'm really happy with the with the yeah. end result i mean to be, honest, I, I, I mean, I, to be honest i was thinking about um if i made multiple of these i might actually sell them 
Yeah. I love the fact you put it in a plant pot. I just love it. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you make something like that, I mean, first of all, with an item such as that, you've got to watch that you don't sit down anywhere near it. You could get a nasty shock. But- oh, no. <laughs> Especially with a burger plant, if you get one scratch, you'll turn insane and you end up killing someone. But then the worst part is if you get killed or unconscious, you'll slowly turn into a vaga plant. I mean, yeah. that's why exactly. the Dalek created them. Yeah, accidents nasty. can accidents can happen, Tom. So to avoid any kind of accidents like that, where do you store your models or display them once they're complete? Um, well, usually I'm always happy of keeping them in a cardboard box I got right here next to me, <laughs> which I store under the bed. Whereas some of the other models I tend to leave out in the open. But the only trouble is they can get dusty, so I tend mm. to always wipe them mm. as best mm. as I could mm. with. Um, we're, depending on how delicate the model is. I mean, also, as well as, um, I hate to be off guard, but you know I always make um, standard models and fun models. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I also do various others. And we were talking about, um, we were talking about the lot, I already showed you the largest model, which is the Macra. Mm-hmm. Well, this is the smallest Doctor Who monster I've ever made. You might be able to see it. What's that? It's a Cybermite. Earth, is it? Oh my Gideon! Yes, so it is. And this is how big the actual Cybermite was in the show. There, really? the wow. yeah, and the main body is silk clay, and I spray painted it all in silver, and then had the blue little light on the end. Yeah, I love the blue light on the end. Yeah, I mean that's why I guess that's why I always love the Cybermen. They always turns out they always do things in silver and blue, which is mm. what. A what the color of the Daleks were back in the old days. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Course, and of course, as I already said, I love bugs, and the uh, cyber <laughs> cyber mat definitely looks more like a silver fish than yeah. the original cyber. Yes, mat. Of yes, course. it does. Yeah, but um, also, I, I, I also do a lot of. I'm planning to do a charity sale in the near <laughs> future because, say the truth, to sort of spread my fame, I've actually spread it. I actually gave some of my models to a natural history museum in Oxford and they're all they're all on display in a glass cabinet. What? And I've made and I've made little um um authentic models of real life bugs, including a large replica of my own tarantula Connie. Wow. Are you looking to to extend this to broaden it out and to become well, a business and to sell them to other people? Well, like like I said, I tend to make most of my favorite monsters, but as I said, I'm more than happy for people to make a request of characters I don't like or characters that, you know, I'm sort of all right with. But I'm mainly doing, I mainly made this um, thing for two reasons, actually. One, because last month it was Pisces and I always yeah. make fishy things for Pisces. As as I said on Type 40, I did plan to make a fish person from the underwater menace. And even though mm-hmm. it's, we're not in Pisces anymore, mm-hmm. I could still make fish models even after Pisces. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mainly made this tuna, well, I made multiple mm-hmm. versions of this little tuna as a way to mm-hmm. um, rescue them for the wild. Because, as I said, these fish are endangered in the wild and I wanted mm-hmm. to find a way to rescue them. So my mother and I sort of had a chat about it. And we, she reckons if I, mm-hmm. if I was going to sell this to the Natural History Museum in Oxford with a magnet behind it, we sort yeah. of agreed £20 each, you know, £3 mm-hmm. for me yeah. to make more of them. And three pounds to donate to them to charity to rescue them. But Brilliant. also along with the blue fin tuna, I've also made this little guy. If you might recognise it. Oh, is that a, is that it's a, some sort of crab, isn't it? I'm trying to think what it is. It's a horseshoe crab. Horseshoe crab. That's so cute. Oh, those are. Yeah. I've definitely seen those. Definitely seen those in natural history programs. Yeah, with a yeah. Voiceover by David Attenborough or somebody said. Yeah, I've seen them. In, I'm sure I've seen them in the sea yeah. life or something like that. I love yeah. the eyes. It's so cute. Yeah, I tried to make it look very appealing for audience. So in case it of those children saying, Mommy, I want to buy it. Yeah, it is. It's fantastic. That's look. So you love making models, not just about Doctor Who. It isn't just Doctor Who then that uh, fires your imagination. Oh, no, it doesn't because I'm sort of a multiple person. You know, I love watching various other shows, many to do mm. with, with monsters, sci-fi, aliens, and all sorts of things. And if you guys don't mind, I've actually bought a bunch of models uh, yeah. outside of Doctor Who, and I was wondering if you can recognize okay. them. Yeah, go on. Okay. Give us a yeah, try. Here's the first model. It's a minion. Fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah. 
this is the little maid's minion that I made yeah. for a mum for her birthday, mm -hmm. and she absolutely loves the model. And turns out the minion in the maid uniform is actually named Tom, named after me. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. I love that. Excellent. I mean, to tell you the truth, I love the minions, but I always prefer the crazy purple ones. Yes, yeah. Because I love purple. It's one of my favorite colors. I do, I do love minions. What else have you got there then, Tom? Well, remember I said we were talking about Pisces the fish earlier, and yeah. I always make fishy models. Well, here's yeah. a very iconic fish you might recognize. Oh, oh, that's got... so cute. He's got his eyes perfectly as well. Oh, yeah, and you can tell it's Mimo because he's got the little lucky little disabled thing. thing. Yeah, oh, yes. Thing. Oh, that's so cute. And I made Beautiful. it last year because last year was 20 years of finding Mimo, and I made it for the anniversary. Oh, no, it's 20, oh, in oh, in 20 years. <laughs> yeah, what I else have you got? Well, speaking of underwater, I got another very familiar character. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my, my kid's favourite SpongeBob yeah. SquarePants. Yeah, my boys. I made that for my father job. because yeah. Dad and I always love watching SpongeBob, and his character, his favourite character, is Squidward, whereas mine is Mr. Krabs. You remember I said green's my favourite colour? Mm -hmm. Well, I got a character that's very green. Oh. <laughs> that's uh, that's mike from monsters inc isn't it yes yes it is and my mum absolutely fell in love with it and and when she was ill she took it to hospital with her and she kept it on her bed ever since Brilliant. but now, she, now she's back at home she's um she she's she's keeping it in her bedroom with all Brilliant. the other models she loves and it's exactly the same color as your jacket exactly the same green <laughs> it, uh, brighter green actually perfect oh um I, I know I got sh so many models to show you, both both outside and inside Doctor Who. But there is yeah. one model that I am um, a little bit nervous to show you guys in case if I oh. get laughed at. I'm but, sure you won't. Well, yeah. you remember I said I I absolutely love watching monsters and sci-fi. Mm -hmm. Well, even though I'm, I love them so much, but sometimes they can be a little bit scary for me, and unfortunately I suffer from nightmares, so uh -huh. it's not my personal fault. So. I tend to watch simplified shows like SpongeBob. You know, cartoon shows are meant for kids, but adults enjoy too. Yeah, well, they're, not, they're, they're not just for kids, Tom. No, 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 no. no. They're all grown but, ups. I can't believe a word of that. But one cartoon that really sparked me, that's incredibly popular for children, but has become very, very popular of adults now. It, it re is really what really caught my eye, and, and at first I didn't like them, but now I've grown very fond of them because they made me feel better. And I'm pretty sure to you guys, you might recognise who this is. My Little Pony! Little pony. Oh! <laughs> oh, oh gorgeous! I've yeah, this is, this is Princess Luna from the show. That's brilliant. I love the glitter. Yeah, very glamorous. I mean, oh, yeah, my, my nieces absolutely love My Little Pony. Oh, yeah, it's great. So, yeah. My it's Little all... Pony, it has, it, it has its own convention now. Oh, it's massive! Um, yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow! Yeah. Yeah. And also, and also not to mention, and I hate to be off topic, but in the show My Little Pony, there was actually a background character called Doctor Hooves, who turns. Doctor oh, Hooves. Yeah. <laughs> was that? Yeah, there was. Doctor Hooves. Get a picture. Put it up on screen. Yeah, yeah I'm being well, serious. We'll there is find... a real background character in the show called Doctor Hooves, and he's pretty much. A pony version of David Tent's Doctor. No way! <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, oh well, we've got to track a picture of that, don't we? Yeah, we, we need we? that one. We need yeah. that one. Do you, do you kind of have a favourite Doctor Who monster that you've made out of your Doctor Who stuff that you personally are most proud of? Aha! Uh -huh. Well, that brings me to the point because oh, obviously you said, um, Simon, I have a Instagram account. Mm. And one of the most popular models I have ever made are these little guys. Oh, the Quarks. 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 Look how cute it is. I know, isn't it fabulous? And these are brilliant because you've actually put them on a little... They walk, don't they? There we go. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. So if I actually wind it up, yeah. it actually walks just like the actual thing. Yeah, I was going to say that's... <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, it literally does walk like the real thing. It's yeah. just brilliant. Yeah. That my dad said it's a little bit of a um, it's a little bit of child cruelty stuffing three little boys yeah. in um plastic bins. 
Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't get away with it today, that's no, for sure. They wouldn't. No, I mean, as I keep saying, of all the robots in Doctor Who, the quarks mm. are my most favourite. I just what is it about them that, that you love? Well, I, it's just the simplicity of them. You know, they're very mm. simple looking, but they also they have your basic look of what a robot mm. looks like. You know, mm. you know, square shaped bodies, monotone, emotionless voices, mm. and of course, clunky feet. And I, I just, I just caught, I just loved the look of them. You know, yeah. the, the look on their heads, especially with no. Mm like features no eyes no mouth mm -hmm. just yeah. little um little circuit holes and i'm pretty sure it might be terrifying for someone who has um trypophobia people mm -hmm. who are scared of tiny holes yeah i just love the, i just love the way they look and if you look closely on this model each one actually has poseable arms oh i didn't arms. realize the arms moved no yeah, i didn't they, yeah, i they, saw they, the arms were just locked yeah, they can't go all the way in because I'm a bit worried they might get stuck in. But also, their head swivels as well. Wow, fantastic. It's, it's so inventive, Tom. Thank you. I mean, to be fair, the Quarks tried to replace the Daleks back in 1968 yeah. after they were well, written out. Yeah, they, they tried. They tried. Yeah, they, they tried to make merchandise of them, but yeah. unfortunately, they didn't succeed because the BBC really hated them because they, they didn't look very you know, menacing as a doll, like, and they have that sort of squeaky, childish voice. Yeah. Shall we destroy? Yeah, yeah, this is the problem. They are. They, they, trying, are uh... they? They, they kept trying. Everybody loves a trial. Doctor Who fans certainly love triers. Uh, this little fella tried to uh, bump off Mel, if you remember, in a swimming yes. pool at Paradise <laughs> Towers. <laughs> I do. Yeah. And you've, you've recreated true, this my... beautifully too. To tell you the truth, I actually made that for Bonnie Lanford for Comic-Con this year. And when I went to give it to her, she said she she had a friend who was absolutely terrified of it, and wow. she was too scared to go in a in a swimming pool and to, to see that thing sort of pinching her. <laughs> well, yeah, I was just going to ask Tom, you know, what what is the reaction when you know you you meet people like Bonnie who's on the show, and you're you're able to give them, you know, something really personal. Well, it well, must be a brilliant it's all, feeling. It, it's absolutely breathtaking. And it's also a little bit nervous for me because I know these people have been on TV and yeah. I know that there's everyone in Comic-Con wants to meet them. You know, they want to have their turn. So yeah. I didn't want to be with them for too long because I had the queue behind me yeah. queuing up for too long. But I was a bit nervous when I was going to give that crab model to, um, to Bonnie. I was like, oh, that's a headache waiting to happen. I'm I'm sort of sensitive to loud noise, like the sensorites are. So I tend to just cover my ears every time mm -hmm. Bonnie Lanford screams. But, but she, didn't. she was she... absolutely amazed with it. You presented this instead to Matthew Waterhouse. Yes, well, he looks thrilled. He doesn't. He looks a little frightened, but still genuinely thrilled. Yeah, I mean, obviously, as I keep saying to you guys, I absolutely love spiders, and mm -hmm. I, I, I'm and I I wanted to make um, Matthew the Marsh Man, but I thought. Maybe I'll just stick with a Auxelian mm. spider, and I tried to make it look like the actual the actual prop as best I could. I mean, as I said, the mm. prop of the Auxelian spider is bigger. You know, it's as big as yeah. Romano's because he's dead. But I decided yeah. to yeah. scale it down a bit because it's easier to transport. I do love the sound they make when they're scuttling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. About yeah. Sticking I'm with ready. sticking with something that's familiar, safer territory, perhaps would have been presenting John Leeson with with this with with K nine. Oh, oh God. Yeah. look at that K nine. K nine's always been my favourite companion. I'm not really a huge dog person, but of course I love my dog, and of course yeah. I love little Lenny. Yay. He's around. He's around somewhere. He heard his name mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> He'll come running now. But it, I just—I mean, I love—I love K9. I'm with you on this one. I adore K9, and that yeah. just looks such a lovely little model. Of yeah, K9. I mean, it is small, but I tried to keep it as close to the um, the yeah. five-inch K9 as best as I could. You know, to make it sort of accurate of how big the characters will be if they were turned into five-point-five action mm -hmm. figures. And when I gave it to John Leeson, he was absolutely amazed. 
and he did his canine voice to me. And you know, most of these conventions and people are going up to get an autograph and that, they're not expecting to be given something, let alone something so personal, <laughs> let alone something that has been made mm -hmm. by you. You know, that it's just, they must be absolutely made up with these gifts that, that, that in effect you just take along and say, you know, here you go, this is what I made for you. Look oh, at yeah. that. Good old oh, Colin. He, and he what have you got? What have you got there, Tom? Oh, it's a cryon. Mm -hmm. he, um, he, asked me, he actually asked me to make it for him after Don't I made him the vervoid. He asked me to make him a cryon. And it, it, the cryon took about or oh, maybe five days to make because they, they were sort of a pearl white. And to give the yeah. effect that's sort of translucent, I've added a lot of nail varnish to them. I wanted to make, um, oh, what was that one he spent the most time with in the cell? Oh, flask. It, yeah, flast. I wanted to make her, but the cape was a little bit difficult. Yeah. difficult so I made a regular cry on instead. Mm -hmm. And I try my best to make it Wonderful. look as feminine as I can, but mm -hmm. not going sort of over the top, like sexy. Mm -hmm. Last time I went to Col Comic-Con, he shook my hands a few times. And now he um, he asked me to make Group Marshal Stike, one of the Sontaran. <gasps> How about Sylvester? Because you've presented him with something as well, this tet trap. Oh yeah, that tet trap took me a long time to make. Yeah. It took about three weeks, but it was definitely worth it. Um, the, to, to tell you the truth, though, the very first time I met Sylvester McCoy is when I was a little, when I was just a little boy. I went to a theatre play in the Hexagon, and oh, he, yeah. um, he he played the villain who who was in Aladdin. And of course, when mm -hmm. he entered the stage, everyone was booing. But in my mind, I was cheering because I know he's the Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> recognize and he's just an absolute hero Sylvester McCoy I mean the first time I went to Comic-Con and met him truly in person the first model I ever made was the candy man and your candy man is truly stunning I remember seeing the candy man a while ago that you made and it is just one of the most incredible models I have ever seen did you present that to him is that one now gone yeah. there it is look, look at that yeah, I gave that model of Sylvester McCoy to the that, that model of the Candyman to Sylvester McCoy about nine years ago now. Back no, wow. Five wow. Years ago, back in So you've been doing these a long old time. Yeah, and you could tell um of course he hasn't got any silver bits on him, but it was me in the early days, you know, trying to trying to make it look as best as I could. When you were that, that many years ago, you were learning your craft as well. You were learning how to, how to make things. But I still think that's just an incredible model. It's just beautiful. I'm not a big fan of the Candyman, but that's just beautiful. Yeah. I mean, out of all the monsters in Sylvester McCoy's era, the Candyman was always my favorite. And the monster itself looked really impressive. But the only problem is, is of course the copyright with Bertie Bassett. Hence yeah. why he never appeared again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they, I they, they got away with it. The BBC did somehow manage. I still don't quite know how they managed to get away with it, but some they did. I don't know what they did. It's yeah, I mean, what I love about the Candyman, he's obviously a very colourful character. Mm. You know, he's all various colours. Yeah, so he's good. So you've got doctors making personal requests you've got yeah. a thriving social media following and a waiting line of other monsters probably thinking well when's it my turn tom put your finger <laughs> out well, well, <laughs> i was going to say that to the end of the video dan but if you want to ask you now is there any monsters you like to have Oh, no. That, oh, God, yeah, I, I know what Dan is going I for. Know what Dan I know for. what Dan is <laughs> It begins with an M, I'm sure. Can I say it? You can, it's you can. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> How did you know? Well, I've I've already met I saw one of the um live chat videos and you mm. you posted an artwork of a mandrill and you said it's been your always your most favourite monster. Always. And you I always love the mandrills. Like, I always thought the mandrills were like um alien gorillas, but apparently from my heard they're actually <laughs> mobile fungus. They were, they almost look caricatures already. Mandrels yeah, do. Yeah. They've got that look yeah. about them. How dare you? They're terrifying. <laughs> well, I've already told you what my three favourite monsters are: the quarks, yeah. the macra, and the eight legs. Yeah. And, I, and I'm still planning. I've already told you I'm going to do a, a scenery with all the spiders in the control mm -hmm. room. But then again, I thought we thought 
should I do that or should I do the great one? You see that? <laughs> oh. I'd be with the great one, be it'd be this big, oh. Tom. It'd be this oh. big. One of the you see one of the first models as well that you made for me was that was the Mara uh, for anybody that's terrified of snakes. But this I just love yeah. this because I love Kinza, I love the Mara, and I just again I zoned in on this one immediately when I saw the photos on social media, uh, and I immediately got you to make me one of these because look at that, I just love that Mara. I've always Brilliant. preferred the one from Kinder. I mean, I don't mind the second one from Snake Dance. This is I prefer the vibrant coloured one from Kinder better. Yeah, yeah, me too. That well, that's so iconically the Mara. You know, that is what I think of as the Mara. And of course, the other model you've made, I've made for you, Simon Broton. It took me yeah. eight wait. It took me eight days to make him, and I was watching it w with my parents, and they absolutely loved the story, and they they thought the Zygons were absolutely hideous. They are, they're brilliant. Yeah. And I love, I love the way, the, the mad eyes that you've given yeah. Broton on this model. Yeah. Absolutely barking mad. He's so yeah. angry. Yeah. <laughs> well, he is a warlord, Simon. So I guess Absolutely. Makes and look yes. at all, again, look at all the suckers. Look at the suckers. How long did it take you to do? And the, again, these suckers, if you can see them, you know, they're like, they're like a millimetre across. I just don't understand how you manage to get the detail to do these it's suckers. Incredible. They've even on the, look on the ends of the fingers. You can just about make out. Can't There's even that. a little, yeah, the little suckers just on the ends of the fingers there. Yeah, wow. that was very amazing. fiddly to do. Just so, amazing. But speaking of which, like I said, I always wanted to write my own stop motion series featuring mm -hmm. the monsters. Yeah. Where in Terror of the Zygons, it's the only Doc Two story to feature stop motion in the scene when um, Tom Baker was chased by the Scarrison. You're right. Mm -hmm. Gosh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could do a brilliant Scarrison model. That would yeah. work. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure um, anyone would easily recognise it as Nessie, the Loch Ness yeah. monster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you, ob you, obviously, you obviously love, we, we know you love Doctor Who, but you, it appears you love classic Doctor Who more than current Doctor Who. Is that is yeah. that true? I mean, I do love some of the new series, but, but especially before... Chris Chibnall took over. I mean, dude, that Spider episode, Arachnids in the UK, it really offended me. It almost makes me want to give up, give up watching Doc Two completely. Because it did make me give up watching Doc Two for a while. It did. Yeah, <laughs> it's about, yeah. about four million, really million people. But, uh, but the thing is, with the thing is though, with with <laughs> with the the divide between the classic and the and the new as regards monsters in particular, though, Tom. Yeah, is I mean, that the the way in which they were realised originally on screen by that kind the, the same sort of invention and yeah. audacity that you employ to bring them to life in your in your world to your vision of how the Doctor Who universe could look. I, th I think that's probably the kinship between what mm. you do now and what Shawcroft did, what the people at the BBC mm. were doing up, up all the way through the 80s. I think you very much are the latest in that line, in that tradition, and they would be very proud of you yeah. and your work here. It's astonishing to see, to see them individually and together. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I've, I, I just love that photograph I took, and you can see all the um, the Doc Two models except for the one by the, near the corner. You can see I've actually made a a pony version of an Auton just for a laugh. Oh yes, down the bottom. I love that. Yeah, I can see it. I can see. It. Oh, so with, much. with the hoof dropped away and the gun coming out. Love that monoid. Uh, I've just been <laughs> watching that story as well, Tom. And, oh, fantastic. I mean, yeah, yeah monoid, I missed the monoid no. top right. Yeah, brilliant. Monoid number one. Yeah. Yeah, and I love the gel guard just I below. Know, yeah. I love the gel should, guard. These need to be displayed in a big Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. I mean, I've got the gel guard here, look. There's, oh, look at the oh. gel guard. I mean, I absolutely love that. If you notice on the top of its head, it's a little piece of wire shaped into yeah. a hoop. And you may be thinking, why have I done that? Well, the easiest question is, it's meant to be a Christmas ornament. Oh, have. brilliant. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> and I love, uh, again, in that photo, look at the, the pencil toppers that you've done. That is, that, that's a Varga plant, the, the first one, isn't it? The top pencil topper. Yes, it is. And I've also done the mechanoid, gel guard, yes. and one of the giant maggots. Maggots, yeah. yeah. Absolutely I mean, brilliant. That's the second Doctor Who story I've ever saw, is the Green Death, because... Even though I love bugs, maggots are one of my least favourite. It just gives me the shivers 
yeah you see him crawling around the, amongst mm. the green slime and especially when yeah. they're sort of hissing at you mm. it really it really gave me nightmares afterwards it especially when i go fishing with dad it makes me want to stop holding them mm -hmm. and i can see you you the, the the servo robot there you've also done as one of the little walkers haven't you the little servo robot there just next to the quark yeah i mean it's a it's a huge shame that the the story that the the server robot appeared in is completely missing and we don't yeah. get to see mm -hmm. how the yeah. server robot actually moved no but i always thought the server robot is like a precursor to the quarks because they do look similar in a way you know they've got similar legs yeah. and they've got little pincer yeah. hands yeah well i believe that anybody who will come across your work wherever however across across social media or display cabinets where all over the country they're going to fall in love with them they're going to want a, a piece of this. They're going to wonder what's next as well. So if people want to keep track of what your upcoming projects are and see pictures of them yeah. as quickly as possible, where, where can they find you on social media? Um, so, so far, you can find me on Instagram. And, of course, as, as I mentioned, I've got a YouTube account, T Dwarf Productions. I've only got one animation on there so far. But right now, we are setting up a, an Etsy account so I'm planning to um, sell the models online. But the only thing I'm a little bit worried about is, of course, copyright. But then again, as you said, guys, they're in the cartoony style. I yeah. guess my, my parents say I can easily get away with it. People can um, look for you on YouTube for T Dwarf Productions, can't they, for, yeah, for the little, mean, little things that you put together? To tell you the truth, I've only got one animation because I'm a little bit inexperienced of using... I've had to do it all by myself. So that's why I'm sort of hoping that if I spread my work out, I might get all the help I need to start making more videos because I need things like the like the microphone, the pop shield, the websites of how to create the animations like um, Photoshop and iMovie. Yeah, and think big, uh, think big. And on, and, and on Instagram, can people go and see the models, that some of the models we've been showing today? Can, have you got photos of those on your Instagram account for people to go and find? Oh, absolutely. The truth is, it was originally run by my uncle Chris, but because he's a head teacher, he, he, he sort of, sort of cancelled doing it. So that's why he's asked us if we can take full control, you know, sort of replace and, it. And interestingly, your uncle Chris and I go back about, all oh, about 35 years because your uncle Chris was one of the original Hoonatics that used to come along to my meetings back in the Midlands, back in the late 80s. Absolutely. Which is how I came to see your models in the first yeah. place, because he was, he was posting them up there. So, yeah, I know Chris is still out there. Hello, as I say, he's one of the original lunatics that used to come along. So, yeah, it's, been, yeah, it's all, it's, it, it, the, the Dog 2 family is very, very happy, uh, close-knit family. We just are, and we just all yeah. work. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely love Uncle Chris, and he always takes me to the Who shop. Yeah. And hardly enough, next month I'm planning to go there, but with my best friend. And as I keep saying, my biggest dream in the near future is to write my own cartoon show. And to tell you the truth, I actually brought one of the main characters with me, and it's this oh, yeah, guy. Oh wow! Who is wow. that? Oh, it's got—he's got your jacket on. It's you. <laughs> That's so cool. So that is fantastic. Oh, so that's wonderful. Is, what this character is he's obviously he's based on me but his yeah. name's master alford brilliant so he's he's actually um an alien race i saw came up with myself he's what i call a plastatorian so he's he's kind of like a mixture of morph and clayface and batman and really he, he does look like morph you're right he does remind me of morph now you said it's the big eyes <laughs> yeah and the friendly look to him yeah it's like a blue morph Brilliant. Yeah. And I love the fact he's got two different colour hands. Yeah, so why for? Because he's an alien made of living plasticine, and plasticine comes in a variety of colours. I thought, what if my race, the Plastatorians, were multicoloured people? You know, Quite what right. Wouldn't they be? What if their body parts were all different colours? And that's why I came up with the idea that Master Over should be multicoloured. So his head and body are purple, one, hat, one arm is red, one arm is green, and underneath his jeans, his one leg is yellow and the other leg is blue. Brilliant. And because he's made of, because he's a hero and he's made of living plasticine, he's mostly indestructible, but he does have one weakness. Oh, yeah. And that's heat. Oh, okay. You're not gonna... 
and I've learned that the hard way because when I <laughs> when I started using plasticine, I hate to be a little bit naughty, but when I started using plasticine, I put a plasticine model on top of the um, heater, and after a day or so, it melted and it stained <laughs> all over the carpet. And oh, yeah, I bet you were good to it. <laughs> yeah, it was up until 2017. I decided I found silk clay, and that's when I started yeah. using it. Yeah. When I went to Hobbycraft. Yeah, so, so to follow to follow your further adventures and misadventures, Tom, where can yeah. people find you and follow you on on social media? Give them the plug now. Tell them where they can find you before we go. Okay, so you can find me on Instagram. It, my my account is called Alford Creative, or you could follow me on my on my yet still constructing Etsy account which is named after my YouTube channel, T Dwarf Productions. And yeah. I've, I've also got one of the other main characters with me from my show, if you don't mind. And yeah. she is scary and cute at the same time, but she's in her Christmas outfit. This is Betsy the Spider. Oh! Oh, oh my God! Wow, lovely Christmas stockings. <laughs> and the bells on the back. Yeah, yeah she's, <laughs> she's obviously meant to dress up as Rudolph... Lorraine. Oh, yeah, she got a red nose. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tom, it's been fabulous to meet you and your menagerie of, of monsters, your, your friends. And uh, well, they're all your friends, aren't they? Come to think of it, whether they're monsters oh, or not, they're all, of, they're, they're all your friends. I think yeah. you've got them tamed. You've definitely got them all tamed. Yeah, I did. Like I said, um, my, master, my character, Master Alford, is, is their leader and he's planned to reform them and teach them to do good things instead of bad things. And because, right, right. They, because they all live in a huge sanctuary ship called Terror Dwarf, they're now known as the Terror Monsters. Brilliant. And it's not just monsters from Doctor Who. It's also monsters from shows like The Doom Games, Godzilla, and various others. Oh, um, it's you, world building. The law. Yeah. Uh, it's all coming together, Sarah. I want, I want this to happen. I know. Yeah. I, do. I just love your imagination, Tom, and you're that creative. I know you'll pull this off. Thank you, thank you so much, guys. Here. But as I keep saying, if I want to spread my fame, I still wanted a little bit of help, obviously, you know, from you well, guys or any other. We'll, we'll keep spreading the word. We'll do absolutely everything we can to spread your fame. Help spread Tom's fame. Uh, get interacting with us in the comments section. Let us know which your favourite is of the various creatures that Tom has managed to bring to life once again there in those fabulous new model forms. So cute but terrifying at the same time. Have you any yeah. requests or things you'd love to see Tom bring yeah. to his universe through his lens there, his version of a particular classic or new Doctor Who monster? Maybe you want to throw down the gauntlet to Tom then <laughs> let us know let him know in the comment section let, let me know what monsters you want me to make I mean I personally I wanted to ask any of you guys is there any monsters you like me to build for you I mean Dan you said you you would love to see a mandrill who wouldn't every time I'll have to have a thing I will let you know Tom what about you Simon I uh, see. I love Sontarans. I love Silurians. Uh, I love sea devils. Um, there's, there's just too many. There's too, too many. Some, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sontarans. Are, Sontarans are my favourite monster of all time. Um, I think. I think those are my absolute favourites. But I love sea devils. I love Silurians. I love them all. I love all the classic monsters. They're the best. Yeah, absolutely, but not as classic as these guys. Look at that! Oh, Look at that! That's, I mean, that's just a really, that's a bespoke livery. That that's never been seen by anybody, has it? No, no I mean, I tried to make, I tried to make my own Dalek characters, like various other people did. Like, mm -hmm. for example, there's a pink Dalek called Dalek Candy, who is a charity Dalek, and she's very popular on the internet. Okay. And this is my own Dalek character. His name's Dalek Moon. He's a servant of the of one of the pony villains called Nightmare Moon. I can't believe his head moves. Look at his head no, moving. It's, it's fabulous. Yeah, really well, is. <laughs> you must be as teased as we are. Go and follow Tom wherever you can find him there on social media and on YouTube. Let us know which your favourite monsters are in the comments section too. And one. anything that we can that pass one. along to Tom, <laughs> whether it's the Daleks, whether, whether it's the Macra, whether it's the, the Nesting Consciousness any one of the others that he's brought before our eyes today. What do you think of Betty? 
there, Betty the Crab and Tom's is, is other accomplices. Is she going to challenge Lenny in the future? You know, who's going to be more popular? Because <laughs> Betty's a rather new she, she, Betty will probably be more popular than Lenny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, of course, I would love to introduce them to each other, but of course, Betty might pinch Lenny's nose or something. Yeah, and I think, and I think Lenny might try to eat Betty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And as always, they can follow us too on social media. Where can people find you, Sarah? Uh, you can find me on X at uh, Starry Eyed Who, and I'm also you on you Facebook. You can find you on Facebook. You can indeed, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, you know, and in the comments under the Type Forty chat, um, I've got some catching up to do with some people. But yeah, <laughs> I'll see you there. So yeah, you I mean, mentioned the Hoonatics a little while ago. Yeah, the Hoonatics. Still running all these years later. Yeah, we're still on the Facebook uh, pages uh, under Doctor Who the Hunatics. What about you, Dan? Where can they find us? Instagram and X at Type 40 Doctor Who there. Just let us know what you think of all of this and all of that, whether it's the podcasts or the live streams. Type 40 Live back each Thursday, of course, from 8 p.m. That's where you can interact with everybody in the live chat as well as us there on the panel, and including Tom there too. He's often dishing out his little pearls of wisdom and keeping us informed about what's coming next from T Dwarf Productions. Tom, Thanks again for, for coming on. Thanks for showing us all your models. It really was delightful to meet you. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Sign up to T Dwarf. <laughs>